Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by an American poet named Joy Harjo. She is a poet, musician, and author who was born in 1951, and she is the first Native American United States Poet Laureate. Some of her collections include An American Sunrise, which came out in 2019, uh, Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings from 2015, Crazy Brave from 2012, and How We Became Human, New and Selected Poems, 1975 to 2002, which came out in 2004. The poem that I'm going to read today is called Perhaps the World Ends Here, which has a very ominous title. <laughs> um, goes like this. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table we gossip. We call enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain, an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. If you look at the Wikipedia entry for Joy Harjo's uh, life, which I went to, to to check on a couple details, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a quote um, from somebody named Julia Morse who wrote this. Quote, Harjo's poems ache with grit, grief, and nature. Her lines are curt and heavy, but they construct delicate stories. End quote. And I really like how that sort of intersection of heaviness and delicacy comes across in this particular poem by Harjo. The way it weaves victory and terror together, for example. The way it weaves um, children and adults, you know, the way it weaves laughter and sadness, birth and death, suffering and remorse together with, with uh, joy and giving of thanks. And, and, you know, it's interesting the way that at the beginning she says that the gifts of the earth are brought and prepared and set on the table. So it has been since creation and it will go on. But then it goes on through the rest of, of, the, um, of the poem to discuss some of the things that might get brought to the table. The next thing she says is we chase chickens from it. And of course, a chicken can also be something that is set on the table. It's prepared and set on the table for nourishment. But then you then it talks about, um, about things like uh, giving birth and bury, preparing for burial. It talks about making men and making women. Um, talks about enemies and lovers, drinking coffee. Um, all these different things are things that get brought and prepared by the earth, by nature, and set on the table. And she calls all these things gifts. And there's a sort of, um, there's, there's a sort of anaphora about this poem, right? The idea that there's a repetition of a word or a phrase at the beginning of every clause. That There's not literally anaphora, but there's sort of a sense of anaphora. There's a taste of it going on here. Um, with the way she creates... Uh, the phrases and the sentences and, and uh, in particular the images, it's almost like she's creating a menu. So while it's not literally anaphora, it's not literally that literary device, that sense of anaphora is, um, is crucial to, to this poem because that sort of repetition creates a sort of 
incantation about it. Not in a way that, um, you know, I, I read recently from Scott Karn's, uh, Scott Karen's book of poetry called Anaphora. And that's meant to mirror the liturgy, it seems, the sense of liturgy. But there's a, here that it's not so much liturgical um, as it is in a way, I, I think incantational makes a lot of sense here in the way that it it's meant to be both about looking backwards and looking forward. It's about memory and longing at the same time. It's about life and death. You know, all those things go together and combined with the form that creates that tone of incantation, which is what makes the poem sort of um, haunting and invigorating at the same time, if I can, if that's the right word. Um, so I think that's something to, to pay attention to as I'm reading it one more time. So once more, here is Joy Harjo's Perhaps the world ends here. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared, set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it. Babies teeth at the corners. They scrape their knees under it. It is here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and the ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down cells and as we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain an umbrella in the sun. Wars have begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth on this table and have prepared our parents for burial here. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse. We give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you.